What's up, everyone? Aaron Nagler here, PackersNews.com. Late in the day on Tuesday, the NFL annual meeting wrapping up in Orlando uh, as we speak, actually. Um, but I thought I'd jump on uh, some great content being uh, put out down there by our guys Pete Doherty and Michael Cohen. Make sure you're checking PackersNews.com for all the latest. Michael's got the latest from Brian Gutekunst and Mike McCarthy. Uh, McCarthy met with reporters this morning. Coach's breakfast, Gutekunst met with the uh, local press later in the day, and um, yeah, a bunch of topics were brought up and addressed, so to speak, including uh, the impetus behind the Demarius Randall trade. This is the first time we've heard from these guys since that went down. Um, Gutekunst gave his thoughts on you know, the attempt to get Kyle Fuller away from the Bears. Uh, Michael did a great job writing that up and kind of getting behind the thinking uh, behind that move or attempted move. So make sure you check those out. And uh, welcome to everybody joining in here. Where's the beard? The beard is gone, yo. Hello, Guadalupe. Nick, hi. What's up, Jeff? How are you, man? Oh, man, I don't even know how to pronounce that name. Tell me some good news. Um, I got nothing. Sorry. The draft is less than a month away. How's that? Any chance of OBJ? Not really. Uh, unless uh, Brian Gutekunst wakes up and goes crazy. I don't think that's going to happen. What would Aaron Rodgers get on the open market? Anything he wants. McCarthy sounds upbeat about the injuries. Yeah, Andrew, uh, there are a couple surprises in there. Um, make sure you check Michael's piece out, PackersNews.com. He's got quotes from McCarthy on all basically all the major injuries on the roster, including Brian Balaga. He pretty much echoed what he told us in Indianapolis um, in regards to Balaga is working do out down in Florida. All signs are positive. Um, Jason Spriggs seems to be ahead of schedule, so that's a little bit of good news there for the Packers. And the one that really surprised me was Quentin Rollins. Sure sounds like he's ahead of schedule, and um, McCarthy seems to indicate that he uh, should be good to go. Uh, by the time training camp rolls around. So that would be obviously a welcome addition for a Packers defensive backfield that needs all the help it can get. I'll bet we go offensive tackle at 14. I mean, maybe McGlinchey, if he falls, who knows? Oh, what's going on with Rodgers' contract? Oh, well, they're talking. We know that. Um, I'm sure it's going slow. I'm sure there's a lot of variables being hashed out. If you want just a glimpse of the kind of things that they're undoubtedly talking about, make sure you check out Tom Silverstein's piece. Uh, dropped a couple days ago at PackersNews.com. It's a very, you know, NFL contracts are not simple. They're, especially at the high level of the highest paid quarterbacks, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be ironed out um, and in, you know, on a lot of different avenues. So, with so many draft picks, why aren't the Packers making some trades? I suspect they will. Uh, draft weekend and you know there's still a month to go anything's possible why did Jordy leave because he was old and slow and he had to go I mean that's an old saying and it's not entirely true but it's somewhat true uh, I think in the second half of last year regardless of who the quarterback was you really saw his um, age starting to catch up to him he lost a lot of the explosiveness and suddenness he used to have as an athlete I still think he can be productive in the NFL, but it's always better to get out a year too early than a year too late. All you have to do is go back and watch you know, the last season, or maybe half a season of Donald Driver's tenure in Green Bay uh, to know that it you know, doesn't look great there at the end. And you don't want guys hanging around and collecting paychecks and not being productive, which is where Jordy is headed. I'm not saying it's gonna happen this year, but it's coming soon. And you'd much rather get out from under it early than you know, be paying the guy to drag your roster down later. Dalvin Bro, Saints corner, are still in play, uh, or Jordan Matthews. So I'll take them one at a time. Uh, Bro, we know has a meeting set up. I cannot find out when the meeting is supposed to be. Hopefully, we'll get some kind of word on that soon. Uh, Jordan Matthews obviously came and went. He is still on their radar. Uh, they haven't offered him a contract yet. I tend to think if it's going to happen, it'll probably be, happen right before the draft. Um, but we'll see. Maybe perhaps they wait till after the draft weekend to see how it falls. And if they don't find something they like in the draft, maybe they bring him in. 
Um, on the flip side, maybe they bring him in, as I said, right before the draft, much as they did Jari Evans last year, to ensure that they don't have to reach for something during the draft. You see any more defensive signings? Um, I would be surprised. I would be surprised if they didn't bring back Devon House at this point. Uh, maybe you know they wait for their meeting with Bro, and if they like what they see there, maybe they sign him. I tend to think they will sign uh, one more uh, veteran cornerback. I'm not sure who that'll be, but um, I'd be surprised if there wasn't at least one more signing. Thoughts on Josh Jackson from Iowa. Um, I know a lot of people have been talking about his slow 40, um, coupled with his disappointing workout in Indianapolis for the Combine. Um, I'm not really concerned about much of that. I, I think you, all you have to do is turn on his tape and see that he is um, an excellent football player. He can clearly hang with the top talent in, in college football. I do wonder about his transition to the NFL and his ability to um, you know, keep up with some of the top flight wide receivers in the league, speed-wise, on the nine routes, etc. But overall, man, I think yeah, he's an excellent player prospect solid going to be a solid pro I'm not so sure at 14 it all depends obviously on what the Packers feel about it and how they have him graded um, but I think wherever he ends up going he's he, I think he's gonna have a really good career uh, Eric Ebron I believe Eric Ebron signed with someone what do you think of bro and when is the meeting with him oh I just talked about that you think Beckham is a possibility not really you think we could trade up to get Denzel Ward? They could. I'm not so sure they will. Uh, I tend to think Gutekunst will use this draft to kind of lay the foundation for his team. You know, the, he's obviously taking over from Ted Thompson, who left the roster in much better shape for Gutekunst than Sherman left for Thompson. But still, there's a lot of makeover that needs to be done. There's a lot of kind of, um, you know, last year Thompson called it, the roster had gotten stale. Um, I think there's there's still some staleness there. And I think having 12 draft picks ensures that Gutekunst, whether he wants to make all 12 of those selections, I doubt he does that, but if he wants to, he can. Or um, he can use some of that currency to move up and down the, the draft board to get guys that he likes at certain positions. Uh, I tend to think this roster is going to get an infusion of youth because of this draft. Um but, you know, we'll, we'll see how it plays out. We've got, like, and all of this is said with a month to go until the draft. I mean, just under a month. I think we're a day under a month to go. So a lot is going to happen between now and uh, that Thursday night when round one begins. How different will Packers passing route concepts and packages look this season? It's a good question. Mike McCarthy reiterated this morning during the coaches' breakfast um, what he had said earlier this offseason about the offensive playbook being you know, basically taken apart and started from scratch, you know. Um, I am curious to see how much different it looks in regards to, I don't think they're ever going to junk McCarthy's basic system, but I do think it will be, to take him at his word, it sounds like there will be lots of different concepts and, um, uh, I guess, flavors used from around the league. I mean, he bristled a little bit when we talk, when we asked him about you know, the success that Sean McVay and um, Kyle Shanahan had had in the last few years. You know, McCarthy said not to take anything away from them, but, you know, he runs his book and his system, uh, his scheme through, uh, you know, a various system that he is sequential and he likes to, like, set things up, etc. And, and he doesn't like to think of it in terms of plays, etc. And he had this long-winded answer and the, you know, and then at the end of it, he came back around and said, you know, not to take anything away from Sean, because obviously Sean McVay is kind of the bell of the ball um, with the turnaround out there in L.A. But underneath it all, it all does come back to, well, you're still kind of running the same stuff you were running you know, when you first got to Green Bay. I mean, it's a little different. Obviously, it's been tailored a lot, especially at the line of scrimmage, to what Aaron Rodgers likes to do. But I think he did sense that it was time to kind of look at it with fresh eyes. Obviously, Joe Philbin being back is a big part of that. Um, but I am as curious as you are to find out, you know, will there be, will there be more uh, bunch sets? Will there be more motion? Will there be uh, greater use of deception? Will there be, um, you know, some more power formations? 
thing. And obviously he's used all of those things throughout his tenure, but um, in his last two or three years, it's gotten very dependent on um, you know, static three and four wide receiver sets. And occasionally they'll motion the back out of the backfield. But uh, I am curious to see how true he is to his word in regards to um, redesigning the playbook. How much do you think Nick Perry's game will pick up with the big three on the D line? Well, I, you know, it's just dependent on him being on the field, right? I mean, I think he is, he's pretty much as advertised when it comes to his play on the field. Uh, he's really strong against the run. He can take advantage of weaker tackles in the league. Uh, he, he'll, he's always going to hustle himself into a sack or two. Uh, that's been his game since he's come into the league. And the year, where he led the team with sacks two years ago that eventually got him paid wasn't really different in that regard. He played through injury. He actually obviously had the club on his hand for some of that. And um, you know, he played well, but I don't think, you know, the addition of Muhammad Wilkerson is suddenly going to change his game. Um, I think he, he, he'll be productive and he'll be an asset to the defense as long as he can stay on the field. That has always been his issue. And it will continue to be until he disproves it. Has Brian Gutekunst's approach surprised you? That's a good question. I put that out on, our, on Twitter last week um, that I am, a, I was a bit surprised that we haven't seen more churning of the bottom of the roster. Now, again, with 12 draft selections, you got to think there will be an infusion of young talent. Um, I thought maybe he might come in and just get to pruning some of the guys that, you know, it was time to kind of move on from the Kyler Fackrells, the Trevor Davises, etc. cetera. Um, but I'm sure he's thinking it doesn't do you any good to get rid of those guys until you see what you can bring in to replace them. So, you know, I would tend to think Reggie Gilbert is a ready replacement for Kyler Fackrell. That's just me. Um, but I thought he'd be a little bit more aggressive with the bottom of the roster. That's, you know, how Ron Wolf operated, and he's the guy who basically brought Gutekunst into all this. Um, that's how uh, Scott McLuhan has operated when he's been in personnel staffs, or the head of personnel staffs. Um, and that's the guy that Gutekunst credits basically with, you know, teaching him how to do this job. So, yeah, yeah it's that's the one aspect that's kind of surprised me. I thought he'd be a little bit more ruthless. But... Uh, that's you know, that's just personal kind of uh, takeaway from it all. Why cut guys now when you don't have to? Well, why keep them around if you don't have to? I mean, move on. I, I just this is the thing. This is what I. If the people are so precious about their players. This is not a Gutekunst thing. This is not a Packers thing. This is an NFL thing. Um, why cut them if you don't have to? Why why keep them? They've shown you everything they're going to show you on the football field, and you know it's not enough. And I know that all players have value. Um, you got to force yourself to get better at some point. And keeping those guys around, uh, A, it doesn't improve you in any way, shape, or form, and B, it sends a nice message to the locker room that, hey, if you know, you're know you not pulling your weight and you're not doing your job and you're not improving and you're not developing the way we need you to, you're going to be out. It's a pretty good motivator. Richard, that's really nice of you to say. Uh, do you see us drafting Rashard Penny? I saw that DJ and Bucky had the Packers selecting him in the second round of their mock draft. Um, I kind of chuckled because I know that would kind of probably set off a bomb on Twitter. I'm sure a lot of the Twitter GMs would be upset with that selection. Um, just because of the, you know, the pretty striking needs that the team has on the defensive side of the ball. But, no, I mean, I can't say I absolutely hate the selection. I think if, and I know there are personnel people who absolutely love that kid. I mean, who think he's legit going to take the league by storm. So, you know, if he's a different, if they, if Gutekunst determines that he's a difference maker and thinks he's great value in the second round, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. Um, then why is Hunley still there? I don't know. Ask Brian Gutekunst. Do you see Packers trading up for Derwin or Roquan Smith? I don't, um, just because I think they're going to let the draft come to them. Now, you never really know how these guys feel about certain players or prospects. Um, they may see a guy who they think is a once-in-a-lifetime talent and ready to blossom 
kind of like Ted Thompson did with Clay Matthews uh, when he traded back up into the bottom of the first round when they were transitioning to a 3-4. He knew he needed an outside rusher. Um, he went and got him. And that was a hell of a call by Thompson, by the way. A lot, not a lot. Of, people always kind of, I not dismiss it, but they don't really remember the fact that, you know, that's a huge call. Clay Matthews was not considered like the surefire um, edge rusher that was going to take the league by storm. Um, and Thompson saw it, and Thompson valued it and went and got him. If there's a guy like that, that, you know, Gutekunst thinks will be transformational for his defense, and he sees him fall into 8, 9, 10, whatever, and he thinks, yeah, I can jump up and get him, yeah, it wouldn't, I wouldn't surprise me, but at all depends on his valuation of that player, whoever that might be. Could you see Josh Jones play more linebacker? Yeah, I think it's probably in his best interests and the team's best interests. Um, I think he's, uh, by far and away, much better the closer to the line of scrimmage he gets. Uh, that said, you know, it's hard to determine how much was him in space last year looking lost in kind of the deep safety spot because of the scheme, because of the calls, whatever, and how much of that was him. Um, yeah, I th I, like I said, I think he's... What he's put on tape so far, it's pretty clear he, he's best the closer to the line of scrimmage he is. Um, that said, I'm not so entirely sure that they're just going to switch him to linebacker, so to speak. I think he'll continue to be a hybrid. A lot of it will depend on what, how Mike Pettin determines you know, he wants to use him. And as I've said a couple of times, both here and on Twitter, they drafted him knowing there was a good possibility that Morgan Burnett would move on. I tend to think he's in their plans at safety, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see what Petten has in mind, so so to speak. Kaiser to be new, the new backup? Yeah, I think uh, there's a good chance of that. Um, I think the draft will have something to say about that. It's a possibility they draft a quarterback. Um, I think it's all about competition. I was joking on Alex's question earlier before about uh, Hundley. You know, the reason I think Hundley is still around is because he's dirt cheap. He has experience in the offense. He's started over half a season for them. Um, you know, he'll, he'll be part of the competition. McCarthy has said he wants uh, four arms to go through camp. And uh, Hundley will be one of those arms. What about Hughes, the cornerback from... Dude, I love that kid. He's a little short. He's a little short for their thresholds. The physical thresholds that Ron Wolf established back in 1991. I love his game. And um, I do wonder if the Packers would make an exception there. Because I think he's a baller. Is Rodgers 100%? That's a really good question. It's something that I've been kind of kicking around in the back of my head in regards to. Every time any member of the Packers is asked about him, they say, yep, um, he's right on schedule, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. But, you know, that, which, of course, is not a lie. Um, I'm sure he is right on schedule. But is he 100%? I don't know. Uh, I think we might start to get that answer when the team reports. Um, I think it's the 16th of April. Uh, they'll be reporting for off-season workouts. We'll get our first look at Aaron Rodgers. Um, Aaron has said he's fine. You know, he's mentioned a couple times. We've all seen him out on the golf course. He sure seems to be swinging all right. His arm sure seems to have a full range of motion. So you know, there's no reason to doubt what they're saying, but I am curious to see how he looks uh, when they get back. DJ Shark, man, that, that kid can fly, I'll tell you that. He definitely bring the speed the Packers need at the wide receiver spot. Um, now that, I think that is much more likely in the second round than a running back. But it's all about value. It's all about where they have these guys graded. But yeah, I love Chark. I love his game, and I think it would be it would be amazing. Who cares about Wolf's thresholds? I, in all caps, mind you. Um, everybody who's ever worked uh, in the Ron Wolf tree and uh, the personnel grouping. Now, some have paid attention to them, some have not. Uh, but they all know about them, and they all work with them, um, and they all view prospects through those lenses. And those thresholds have helped the Packers and a lot of other teams win a whole lot of games since 1991. Sorry, all caps internet commenter. Um, there's a lot of history there. If he chokes on the scramble, kiss this season goodbye. 
No, I think that's true of pretty much every season. Do you think Vita Vey could be the answer at 14? You know, now that they've signed Wilkerson, I think it was a lot, it's a lot less likely, obviously, but you can't rule it out just because it's a GM's job to look five years down the line. Um, Wilkerson is not an assured thing by any stretch of the imagination. If Vey is, a, you know, far and away their highest graded player, uh, when they're on the clock, they're at 14. Maybe they take him. I tend to doubt it. I tend to tend to think they'll look elsewhere, but can't rule it out. Um, is Joe Johnson available at defensive? That's almost as good as a Raji question. Let's see. Packers are going to be sneaky in the draft. Well, we'll see, Paul. Draft Davenport or Jackson? Ooh, I'd probably take Jackson. Ahmad Brooks back? I think later this offseason, if they get to a point where they don't like what either what happened in the draft or um, maybe after they've started their offseason workouts and they don't like the looks of you know the guys they're bringing back, like Vince Beagle and Reggie Gilbert, etc., that they're undoubtedly expecting to have some kind of development from. Um, yeah, I wouldn't close the book on that just yet, but I don't think they're in any, any hurry to do it. All right, everybody, I'm going to take a jump, but uh, thanks so much for coming out and asking me questions. I can't believe every day there's so many of them. Uh, thanks, guys. Thanks so much. Um, make sure you're checking PackersNews.com for all the latest. Michael and Pete still writing away. Tons of great content uh, coming from Orlando. Um, we'll have it if it's Packers even tangentially related. We'll, uh, we'll have it for you at PackersNews.com. In the meantime, hope you guys have a great night, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.